give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son.
Good morning and welcome to Changing Lives Ministries. I am Sister Amanda and I want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. It is my opportunity to be able to say thank you for coming to join us today. Come on in, set yourself up so that you can get the word that you need. I expect to hear about a blessing. Amen. And you all pray for me. I'm going to, the subject for your subject for the day is a new thing. A new thing. Tell your neighbor, God is doing a new thing. God is doing a new thing. Amen. And I, I need you to listen to me this morning. I told you a dream I had a couple of weeks ago. I didn't know totally what it means. I know what it means now. It's, it's, it's about a new thing. I said it's about a new thing. Uh, and, and if I go back into the dream a little later, I'm not going to do it right now. But if, but if I have to, I'll go back into the dream and tell you what it is. Amen. So you may take your seat and give me Matthew 24 and 1. Matthew 24 and 1. Now, you're going to have to follow me this morning. It's, it's not because it's so deep, but because uh, sometimes things challenge old boundaries. Okay. And, and so what you have to make sure is that you're, somebody say, thinking in the now. Amen. So that you don't get caught up. So I want to go to Matthew 24. Amen. Matthew 24 and 1. When you get it, say amen. Amen. Read. And Jesus went out uh -huh. and departed from the temple. Somebody said he was leaving church. He's talking leaving about the building. Church. Amen. Read. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Now the disciples, amen, they leave this beautiful edifice and the disciples are coming to Jesus because they want to show him just how beautiful this temple is. And what happened? And Jesus said unto them, uh -huh. See ye not all these things? He said, Do you see all these things? Read. Verily I say unto you, This is what I'm surely I say to you. There shall not be left here one stone. Uh -huh. Now says, Not one stone shall be left here. Read. Upon another. Upon another. That shall not be thrown down. Just what Jesus says that God is going to flip this church over. He said, I know you all are loving it. I know you like the way it looks. He said, but God, he said, what you're looking at, he said, it does not one stone that's stacked on top of another that God is not going to be, it's not going to be thrown down. Amen. Did you hear it? Amen. So I, I wrote some things down. I'm going to read them like I wrote them. Then we'll get into the word. I said, your life becomes about what you have chosen to become one with. Whatever you decided to become one with, whether it be ideals, whether it be beliefs, whether it be actions, and God actually wants to break us out of boxes and confinements. God wants to do a new thing in our life, but sometimes we're devoted to old precedents. And because we're devoted to what it used to be, God can't take us to where he wants to take us. So God wants to take us, somebody say, to a new dimension. Not that we're talking about another level, but God actually moves in dimensions, not levels, it's dimension. It's, it's, not, it's not higher, it's places. Okay? It's walking from one dimension into a whole nother dimension. It's not up in the same dimension. And so what God wants to do is transpose you from where you actually are now to a whole different place. Somebody said new place. A new place. Okay? So, so when he's moving you, that's moving you to a new place. Somebody say in him. So I got to get rid of some old conditionings. Yes. Because, you know, when he wants to hide you, amen, he wants to move you to a secret place in him. Yes. Amen? He wants to put you in a safe place in him. Yes. Amen? And so what we have to do is begin to understand that sometimes the way we think thinking is what's keeping us from getting the new that he has for us. So he has to try to demolish old thinking and old mindsets and old ways and old uh, ideologies, you know, old philosophies. God is coming against old things because God is not stuck in yesterday. Amen. Yesterday is gone. God is all about what you are doing right now. So there's a newness and a nowness that God wants to bring us all into. But he can't bring us into it if we're holding on to yesterday. Am I talking to anybody? Amen. Amen. So I, I wrote this saying, you've heard me say this a thousand times, nothing is worse than a slavish devotion to precedent. When you're committed to tradition over the word, when you're committed to doing something you used to do just because you used to do it, when you won't challenge old thinking because it's been your thinking all the time, you don't stay wrong because you've been wrong long. You ought to want to come out of that. Am I talking to anybody? Okay, so this thing that we're desiring, you know, because God wants to move you. Now, watch this. This is interesting. 
Because God wants you to be enamored with him. Love the Lord thy God. Yes. Love the Lord thy God. Yes. With all thy heart, mind, soul, and what? And strength. God said, I want you to give me everything you got. Yes. Because I'm the only one who can give everything back to you. People can give to you in portions. Yeah. God can give it to you back unlimited. Huh? And, and so God said, I want you to give me everything you got because I can love you in a way nobody can love you. Yeah. Are you, am I talking to anybody? Does someone always say, we're actually experiencing the incomprehensible. That what you are actually living in God, you can't explain it. That's why everybody got a different revelation on it. Amen. That's why every time you tell your testimony different than my testimony. What he brought you out of, like the same thing he brought me out of. How I touch or taste him and see him is not how you taste and see him. Because he's a different experience to everybody. And so he said, so because I love you, even though it might not be the same story, it's the same love. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Huh? He, and so when we really begin to understand that, he said, I love you. The Bible said, what's this? Watch this. What type of love? And ever. Nice. Which means I didn't start loving you yesterday. And I didn't start loving you when your mother met your father. And I didn't start loving you the day that you were born. I've been loving you as long as I've been in creation. Now you got to catch that, which means I've been loving you eternally. Because you didn't come to me in a moment. You was always in my mind. Oh, y'all got to get this. The day you was created was not the day God thought about you. He told Jeremiah, before you was in your mother's belly, he said, I knew you. God said, I had a relationship with you before you got here. Yeah. Why is that important? Because before you got here, I knew what you would want. Yeah. Mm, you got to catch that. Because I pre-saw your need. I pre-met your need. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. Watch this. All things were made for me before me. Yeah. <laughs> is that what he said? Yeah. All things were made for me before me. Before I got here, all things were already made for me. Is that talking to anybody? So when you got here, your problem is new to you. And it might be new to the time that it manifested, but it's not new to God. So God said, before you got here, I had already worked it out. So we say, Jesus will work it out. Not will, he has. Oh, that's so good. Because we, watch this, we are saying that God will do what he's already done. And because we're putting it off, we're not receiving it in our now. Am I making any sense? So God says, I got some things I want to give you. Amen? And I want you to testify, watch this, not about what I did yesterday, but what am I doing for you today? Praise God. Janet got that right. What have you done? Ooh. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Janet got that right. What have you done for me lately? What, did God do something for you today? I know you got saved. I know you got sanctified, baptized, filled with a mighty burning fire. But, but, but what did he do for you today? What's your story to people when you meet people today? Is God active in your life today? Is God being good to you right now? Is God, are you experiencing God's abundance right now? Are you experiencing his goodness? Somebody say right now. Well, then right now is your story. And the reason you're depressed is you forgot about right now. The reason you messed up is you forgot about right now. See, you so caught up on what happened that you miss he's still being good. You lived through what happened. Amen. Oh, you missed that. You lived through what happened. The only reason you're still experiencing it, you won't let it go. But if you're remembering, that means you passed it. Tell you, if I'm past what happened to me. So, so, so watch this. You know, you, you, you got to be more than delivered. You got to be healed. Yeah. See, a lot of us, we've been delivered. But we still remember the fish, the cucumbers, the leeks, the onions. You know, we still remember what the diet was in Egypt. And God said, I'm trying to get that taste out of your mouth. Yes. So the building, the Bible said it was beautiful, wasn't it? Yes. But here's what God said, I'm going to tie it down. What you love in the day will be extinct tomorrow. And that's intentional because I'm always bigger than the moment you're standing in. Is this making any sense? God said from moment to moment, I'm with you. Jesus said it best. He said, I'll never leave you, nor what? 
He said, Lord, I must go that the comforter will come because right now fixed in this body, I can only be one place one time. He said, but I'm going to send the comforter that watches no matter who you are when you call my name. Somebody said, when I call his name, when you call my name, I'm going to be there. And it don't matter how many of you all are in trouble. It don't matter how many are in need. It don't matter how many are going through something. No matter where you are, when you call my name. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, he'll be there. So the old folks had it right. We sing a song anyway. Anyway, you bless me. There's no bad way to be blessed. The blessing is a blessing. Hallelujah. <laughs> no, and the Bible said the blessings of the Lord make it what? If you get something that came pain with it, it didn't come from God. Amen. Amen. You got to settle that. Whatever you get that brought heartache, God didn't send it. How was it a blessing till you learned it? Hallelujah. Some of y'all caught that. You know, you know, you know, you know, when, 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 when the relationship was new, it was a blessing. I was a curse then. You just didn't know it yet. Crazy hadn't showed up yet. Dysfunctional hadn't showed up yet. But it was lurking. The blessings of the Lord make it. And, and boy, listen to me. Nothing God gives you come with pain. Oh, I wish you... I would just eat that piece of pie right there. That nothing God gives me comes with pain. So if I get it from God, I'll shout about it forever. If I get it from God, it's not a seasonal happiness. It's not a seasonal worship. It's not a seasonal praise because it will always be good. Whatever God gives me, it's eternally good. Does this make sense? Amen. So in every season that God has existed, or every season that has existed, God wanted to show, some, show you something about who he is. He wanted to give us what we call progressive revelation. In the Old Testament, we had these names. He was Jehovah Jireh. Amen? Amen. Jehovah Nisi. Elohim. Yahweh. All of these were different revelations. Watch this. To express a different aspect of who he was. And who he is. And so he gave it to us in, 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 because we can't handle everything at one time. Amen. So he walked him through the Old Testament. And then when he got to the New Testament, he said, you know what? I'm going to give him a name that's above every name. I'm going to give him a name that every, every knee shall bow. I'm going to give him a name that when they say that, that every tongue shall confess. What's this name? Jesus. Watch this. That Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm going to give him a name that demons tremble. I'm going to give them a name that they can cast out devils. I'm going to give them a name that they can dispel sickness. I'm going to give them a name that peace must show up when they call it. I'm going to give them a name that's above every name. So whatever you're going through, his name is above that name. So I got to appropriate his name. Somebody say appropriate it. You know, we say my God shall supply. See, you missed it in the shell. So you quote scripture, but you didn't appropriate when it's coming. My God shall supply is future. I keep telling you, you might as well say, my God finna supply. Finna ain't in the Bible. My God is supplying all my needs according to what? His riches in what? I don't have to put it off because it's happening right now. Because God wants us to experience the newness and the nowness. Somebody say the newness and the nowness. God's trying to get you out the past. All your trauma is coming from the past. All your pain is coming from the past. You came through here and you act like you was never leaving. Just like you showed up, you got to go. True. Amen. We used to sing an old song. This world is not my home. I'm just... But you're clinging to everything. You got scratch marks down to everything you put your hands on. Because you're trying to hold on to everything. And they said, this world, I'm just passing by. And when you really get that revelation, you stop digging your, well, my father put it this way, you stop digging your stakes too deep. That's right. 
Because you know you're transient. Yes. I said you're transient. Yes. You know you're going to pass through. That means that people are lending, he lended them to me. He, they, uh, they are borrowed. God said, I'm going to let you borrow people that are in your spaces. And I'm coming back to get them. Because I just lended them to you for why you're going through here. And this is why he said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and spirit. And what? And thy neighbor. As what? In other words, watch this. In your time here, treat people right. Amen. I'm going to say it again because I, I didn't get a big enough amen. In your time here, treat people right. Stop mistreating people. Stop taking advantage of people. Stop, watch this. Stop being petty with people. Uh, stop, you know, stop holding old grudges and things because everybody done done something. Just like you mad at somebody, somebody mad at you. You've offended somebody. Somebody got trauma because of something you said that you don't even remember. So quiet as a kept. All of us got coffins behind us. All of us have killed, but we upset because somebody tried to kill us. But we all right with killing as long as somebody's not making an attempt on us. And God said that this offense and all of these things that is happening in you, they got you stuck in a yesterday that's been gone. And you're going to have to make up in your mind, do I want to move into the now? Is God good to me today? Is all I got that he got me to today? Hallelujah. See, some of y'all missed that. Some of y'all act like he just drug you into this moment. You know, I just, by the grace of the Lord. I've come a long way. Is that, is, is that us? Yeah, he did, did, did bring us through. But that don't sound like joy. I'm not saying there's no appreciation in it. But it don't sound like joy. I come a long way. You know what, you know what, when you're having a good time, you ever know when you're having a good time, time passes quick? Real quick. Yeah. Preach, preacher. <laughs> We're supposed to be happy about this joy. Yeah. We're supposed to be experiencing this on another level. We're supposed to be, 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 be talking to one another. Watch this. Letting people know that I am excited to be saved. Yeah. I'm excited to be sanctified. I'm excited that the Holy Ghost lives down on the inside of me. I'm excited to show the world that I'm a believer. So watch this, Judges 6 and 35. Tell you never, God has a plan for me. Judges 6, verse 35. When you get it, say amen. Amen. Read. And he sent messengers uh -huh. throughout all Manasseh, uh -huh. which, which also was gathered after him. Okay, now I must be somewhere else. That Judges 6.35? Yes. Go to Judges 6. I don't know. I think let's try verse 11 or 12. Judges 6, 11 or 12. Amen. It's a water break. And there came an angel of the Lord mm -hmm. and sat under an oak which was in Oprah. That's it. Go down to about 10 verses. Then go down to where. So Gideon said to the Lord, if you save Israel by my hand. Where is that? 15? 15. Read that. And he said unto him, uh -huh. Oh, my Lord, yes. wherewith shall I save Israel? Mm -hmm. Behold, my family is poor in the yes. Nessie. Watch this. Somebody say yesterday. 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 <laughs> all my troubles seem to so far so away. Watch this. He talking about trauma. My family is what? Poor. Uh-huh. My family is poor in Manasseh. Read. And I am the least in watch my this. father's now, house. Now watch this. Now you know you got a problem when you say they poor, but I'm poor compared to they poor. They poor, but I'm the least. See, that's real trauma. When, watch this, you know, like my grandmother used to say, Mother Benny, you know this is the truth. You could not out-sick her. <laughs> I 
Mother Billy, she know I'm telling the truth. I don't care what was wrong with you. Anybody know anybody like that? I said, Big Mama, my back is hurting. Boy, that's, but my back hurting and my head hurting. Boy, we used to. This is true. This is this is not good, but it's true. I used to nudge Terry, say, Watch this. Big Mama hurt my toe. That's what I've been trying to tell you. You ever see people that you're not gonna out sick them? You ever see people you call them with your problem, just give them about a couple of minutes? And they're gonna flip the whole conversation. And it's gonna be about what they're going through and not what you're experiencing. Huh? Gideon's saying they poor, watch this, and they poor don't even, my poor don't even compare to they poor. Watch this read. And the Lord said unto him, Uh huh. Surely I will be with thee. Read. And thou shalt smite the Midianites uh -huh. as one man. Read. And he said unto him, if, if now I have found grace in thy sight, yes. then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. Now listen to this, because I've heard this preached a lot of ways. Gideon said, if you are really with me, he said, give me a sign. Is that what he said? Yes. Watch this read. Depart not hence, uh -huh. I pray thee, Read. until I come unto thee and bring forth my present and set it before thee. Read. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. Uh huh. And Gideon went in and made ready a kid and the unleavened cakes of an ephah of flour. Read. The flesh he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot. Yes. And brought it out unto him under the oak and presented it. Yes. And the angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cakes and lay them upon this rock and pour out the broth. And he did. So. Uh huh. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up fire out of the rock yes. and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Uh -huh. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. Three. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord. Now when Gideon did what? Perceived. That he was what? An angel of the Lord. Because here's the thing, your aha moment didn't just show up. There are events that lead to you finally accepting realities that you wouldn't accept in the first place. When you see it, that wasn't the first time you saw it. That was the first time you accepted it. And so when Gideon said to the Lord, you know, I want to know that you are, you are on my side. And then later on, you know, he started fleecing the Lord. Let it be dry. The next time he said, let it be wet. He started fleecing the Lord. And I've heard a preacher preach that. And here's what they would say. You know, you should have known when God gives you something, you got to move. But sometimes it's not about you not wanting to move. You don't want to move without him. Oh, we're going to take a different turn on it. Gideon, Gideon is saying, look, I don't want to move in self-sufficiency. Yeah. I don't mind doing what you told me. I just want to be as clear that it's you that said it. Yeah. Uh, it, it this is not about Wrong. me doubting you. This is about confirming to me what I need to know to be the man I know you called me to be. You know, and sometimes we talk about this whole thing of blind faith. There is no such thing as blind faith. You saw something before you believed. Because faith only comes by hearing. And hearing by what? The word, the word of God. Gideon said, so the angel shows up and he does something. And then the Lord does the miracles with Gideon. And when the Lord does that, Gideon said, I thank you. Because now I can trust that it's you that sent me. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So Gideon said, I don't want to move out in, somebody say self-sufficiency. He's asking for a sign, but it's not because he's doubtful. He just want to be clear. I wrote down something about self-sufficient. That's when we lead our lives in such a way that we don't need God. That's, that's for all you people who play it safe. God calls for risk. 
Mm, it's quiet in here now. God never called you to play it safe. God said, I want you to take a chance. I want you to venture out. I want you to risk something. Huh? This is what God called. And so the self-sufficient is all these people who want to play it safe and they want to keep things going on a small scale. They live their lives to say, I got this. A lot of people in the church, they live in their life to show God and man I'm good. No faith. Because I'm not going to believe for nothing. I've been too disappointed to trust believing. Oh, y'all got to get that hope deferred. In other words, I've been disappointed so many times that I thought it's safer not to expect. Is this making any sense? Yeah. I've given up hoping. I don't want to risk no more. I don't want to risk emotional trauma. But the problem is you won't miss, you won't feel emotional exhilaration. Because you're staying in this safe place. Self-sufficiency. Is that you? You living your life to say I'm good? That's, that's the problem with the middle class. The middle class work so they can be good. Oh, boy, y'all quiet on me now. Woo, I see how you're looking at me. You, you know, they, 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 they work so they don't have to borrow. You know what I mean? You know, I, I got enough money in the bank. My, you know, my retirement plan is good. You know what I mean? They work, they, they work so they don't have to need God. Somebody said self-sufficient. Watch this. Then there's codependent. Mm -hmm. We're going to change the world. As soon as somebody show up, they can help me change it. <laughs> there are people that they're waiting. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to be my best self when I get married. As soon as my help show up, I'm going to show God what I got. Okay, see how y'all looking at me? Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Uh, 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 uh. You, 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 you're not going to give your best because you can't give your best by yourself. I buy the house when I find a man. <laughs> how, much, how many of us are putting our life on hold because we're waiting on somebody else to enjoy our life with? And you won't enjoy your own life now because you think without a partner you can't be happy. Is that us? I said, is that us? Yes, Gideon says, God, I just want to know that you're with me. And then there's what I call, watch this, true dependency. Watch this. You step into, and I want to write this, read it like I wrote it. You step into true dependency when you trust God for who he says you are. See, some of y'all missed that. Not who God said he is. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. But, but we already believe that he is. You don't have a problem believing God is who he say he is. That's not your struggle. Your struggle is believing you are who God said you are. You don't believe what God said about you. You're not moving because you don't believe that God said that you are the greatest he said you are. When God said, I know the plan that I have toward you, you don't believe it. I can't be that great. I can't, I, I can't be the one to come to save the world. I can't be the one that people are going to call on. I can't be the one that people get advice from. I can't be the one that saves people. So you know what I'll do? I'm going to play little. Because I don't believe what you said about me, but I'm clear what I believe about you. And God said, this is a, this is a partnership. God said, you think I invested in you to be nothing? God said, you think I created you and spoke a word over your life so that you would not come to fruition? You live in your life half glass full full because you're afraid of what I put in you so you won't pour? God 
God, help me believe what you said about me. Because we tell people about God all the time. My father has a cattle on a thousand hills and the hills belong to God. But what about you? And I can't get to the new me because I'm stuck in the old remembrance. It's what I, watch this, it's where I came from that's speaking to what I can't go. It's, it's my people are the poorest and I'm poorer than them. How am I supposed to rise when I don't have anything? God said, you don't need nothing but the want to. The want to. Satan is after your want to. I wish y'all hear what I'm saying. Satan is after your desire. Satan said, if I could just snuff out the desire, I don't have to worry ever about them rising. I just want them to have, focus so much on disappointment that they stop believing they can even get up. And you know why you can't get up? Because you can't remember who you were. The prodigal, watch this, all that that he went through. You know why he went through it? He had a memory lapse. He forgot that he was connected to his father. And when the Bible said, and when he came to himself, watch this, what happened when you come to yourself? He just remembered who he was connected to. And what we do is, when we do remember ourselves, we still try to take our trauma back with us. Oh, yeah, because he said, you know, if you, if I just come back, if you would just make me as one of your servants. In other words, let me bring a whole new way of doing Christianity in. Oh, you missed that. Huh? Huh? Don't bring me back as a son. Bring me back as what I've been experiencing, slavery. Bring me back as a servant so I can serve, watch this, not in the capacity that you put me in, that I belong, but in the capacity that the world has conditioned me to. And that's where we're losing it. Because culture is teaching us. It is so sad what's happening in today's time. It is horrible what's going on out there. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining our live feed and broadcast. We do appreciate your time, but we are eager and excited that you're joining our community, our faithful community of followers and believers, people who are life changers, who are world changers. And so what we're going to ask you to do is if you have a desire to give because this message is feeding you and providing everything that you need to help you get to that next level to present your best self then what we're going to ask you to do is partner with us no gift is too big or too small in the kingdom of god that is going to be utilized to reach the untaught the unchurched and the uncommitted so we thank you so much for what you're doing what you've done and what you will continue to do as a life changer thank you so much Remember, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. God bless you.